it's been raining most of the afternoon and uh, the garden is nice and muddy as it should be right now and what I'm showing you here is one of three count them three baby pumpkins and this is the smallest one um, just this one just started up this week so far so good I'm gonna spray it to keep the bunny away uh, we pretty much decided that next year we're going to put a bunny fence around the entire garden to uh, try to keep from having all these problems that we've been having because it's been two years in a row where we've had really aggressive rabbits in the yard. I wonder what this is. Oh, okay, that is a radish flower. Last year a hawk took care of the problem, but this year I haven't seen the hawk so far. This is pumpkin number two. And there is the big one. And I'm surprised I didn't see before. Pumpkin number one. Now I'm thinking, but I'm not sure, that this is a trick-or-treat. Um, trying to trace, yeah, these are trick-or-treat pumpkins, I'm pretty sure. What am I focusing on here? Let's see if we're getting anything from the aspens yet. The ones that were so quick to grow. Let's see if they're being nice and quick to set fruit. No, nothing yet. Nothing that I can see. So the trick-or-treat is the first one to set fruit then. And anyway, there's our uh, sweet sliced cucumbers. They are doing very, very well. Starting to get flowers. So hopefully by next week I'll have a baby cucumber to show you. And right over there under the bunny fence, which we are going to purchase more of, those are the beans. Been flowering for several days now and I'm expecting to see baby beans any day. Here's the corn, it's kind of getting the worst of the drought. It's, uh, no matter how much we water it, it looks pretty dry. But this rain that we had today will help. Hopefully we'll get some more rain tonight. Here's our cantaloupes. I keep forgetting to talk about them. I don't see any cantaloupes yet, but uh, they sure are healthy and they're climbing around. And Oh, there's a flower for you. We uh, harvested a, a tomato this week, and uh, the brandy wine is next. It's unusually early for brandy wine; usually takes till September almost to ripen. There's a uh, giant Marconi pepper. This middle plant. Oh yeah, there's a pepper on there too. Am I focusing on it? it you can kind of see it. And here's the original one that I was making fun of. It's now a good six inches long. They're supposed to be ripe when they're eight inches long. And they turn red really quick too. There's another pepper on that same plant. I'm still hoping these aren't actually hot peppers, but they are doing everything that uh, it's uh, giant Marconi is supposed to do. So with any amount of luck, they are giant Mar Marconi. So anyway, this was the first tomato to produce, I forget what kind it is, probably Big Boy or Beef Steak or something like that. And there is Brandywine, almost ready to go. Here's our asparagus, growing away there. Um, these were started from crowns. They're Mary Washington, which isn't a type of choice, but they were cheap, so what can I say? Um, so I read that we can eat them next spring, 
but we really should wait another year beyond that, but we're not going to do that. We're going to eat them next spring. It's when you start them from seed that it takes three years for them to be ready. And uh, here's my little Rose, been sleeping through the heat wave. And uh, flat's black, which is starting to take a little. I think it's a little bigger than it was. I really like this yarrow. You like that? I like that a lot. Especially when the flowers mature, they turn this, well, before they mature, they, they're this dark maroon color. And uh, what else have we got to show you? Some strawberries. These are cute, little tiny strawberries. I had to cover them because the birds like to eat them. So hold on a second, I'm going to hit the pause button and then we're going to talk about fertilizer. I did find some Japanese beetles in the garden this week and uh, I freaked out and then I read online that as long as you only see a few, you shouldn't freak out because they will be gone in about a month and they, if there's only a few, they're not going to do that much damage, so I'm not going to talk about them. Um, I'm going to talk about fertilizer, uh, especially as it regards pumpkins. I started the season putting one of these stakes next to each uh, pumpkin vine. Um, they were in their little uh, pots, those uh, coconut fiber pots as you remember. And uh, I put one of these in the ground next to the pot at the point that I wanted, at the direction that I wanted the vine to grow in. And it's working. Uh, which is odd. <laughs> You're supposed to actually look for some kind of a joint on the vine that will indicate which way the vine's going to grow. I have never been able to do that. So I just put the fertilizer stake in the direction I wanted the vine to grow and lo and behold, <laughs> they did grow in that direction pretty much. Uh, but now that we're into the season, you see how overgrown the vines are. So uh, there's no way to tell where you know, there's, there's roots all over the place now. There's no way to, way to tell where the original roots were. So, I went out after reading an article about the advantages of fish fertilizer for pumpkins. Um, I went out and bought this stuff. And uh, for the next month or so, I'll be spraying this every two weeks. It smells something horrible, but uh, it does help keep the bunny away for a little while. And uh, in the late season, there's another fish fertilizer that is, I think it's, the, the, uh, the amount is 001, which is all potassium. And that's what you're supposed to use to make the pumpkins get really big. So I'll be trying that. So that's where we are with fertilizer. And uh, of course my brother had to put a nice belch on my, my video. Um, that's all for this week, and I'll see you next week.